Hello, I am Andrew AC Yoshimura for Game Life Balance Australia and today is my birthday! That's right, today I'm 35 years old. So I thought I'd do an unboxing video for my main present. Now, first of all, need some glasses. I thought I might show off what my other friends gave me because they gave me cool stuff too and I'm a show off. Okay, so first of all, uh, what did I get myself? Well, I'm worth it, let me tell you, because I got myself Shovel Knight for the Wii U. Uh, I always prefer discs or cartridge-based uh, media, basically because it means I have my own copy, it can't get taken away from me, and to me that's kind of important. I have nothing against digital media, I think it's actually really awesome. Great if you want to save space, and uh, I should probably start thinking about that in the not-too-distant future. Okay, I also got myself an Elgato uh, Game Capture HD device. This is actually kind of related to the main present that I got because uh, I can start streaming stuff in HD and Twitch and it makes it a hell of a lot easier than uh, the method I was using before which was like an old, uh, basically an old VHS video to a digital converter. It wasn't really meant for video games but I jerry-rigged it. All right, uh, my good friend Rob, uh, co-host, gave me this for my 35th birthday, it is a singlet top of the Mario 1 characters, weapons and enemies. It's really cool, it is extra large, and I am an extra large, but this thing was tight. Like really, really, really tight. It looked a bit funny on me to be honest. But I will wear it anyway, because I'm sure Rob would love to see me in something this tight. <whistles> He's gonna hate that. I also got uh, from Rob some Nintendo Power Mints shaped like the uh, original NES controller, and a Mario mug, which I will, from this point on, use to drink whiskey out of. I don't actually drink tea or coffee or anything like that. You know, only healthy stuff like scotch or bourbon or whiskey. Just whiskey. All right, a uh, good friend of the show and the podcast, Ben, gave me the history, sorry, the true history of the Blackadder. At last, the cunning plan in all its hideous hilarity. Now, I'm a massive fan of Blackadder. My favourite is actually season three with Hugh Laurie as the Prince Regent. And I cannot wait to get started into this. It's, uh, it's actually really quite thick and it's got a whole bunch of colour uh, pictures and it's all about the production history of Blackadder. So, I also got from Hicks, uh, Machi Kori, a board game. Now, I'm actually quite a bit of a board game fan. I love these things. I just never have enough people to play them with me. So I'm going to have to get uh, Hicks out here at gunpoint to show me how it works. Actually, I don't own a gun. Knife point. I don't own any sharp knives. Fist point. I will get him out here at fist point, make him read the instructions, and then teach me how to play. Uh, I suppose I could read them myself, but fist point sounds better. All right. Uh, my, old, my friends also think that, for whatever reason, I am a bit of a lush. Can you believe this, folks? So I have here one litre of wild turkey American honey. Dangerous. I do like this stuff, but man. I also have wild turkey American honey sting. So what's the difference between this one? Well, uh, sting has uh, pure honey, bourbon whiskey, and ghost pepper. So man, I am really hoping this thing is hot. Looking forward to drinking some of that. And of course, Good friend, the E-Man, we shall just call him the E-Man, gave me some Glen Morangy, which is my favourite Scotch whisky. I first heard it mentioned in uh, Highlander, where Conor McLeod uh, gets some at a bar, I think it was. And I wasn't a big fan of Scotch at the time, but the first time I really got into it and tried it, it was Glen Morangy. And it, it was good. I really liked it. And, you know, because I'd been drinking nothing but bad Scotch, or trying bad Scotch up until this point. Glen Morangy, fantastic. In fact... Since it's my birthday, it is the 26th of April here in Australia, right now, right at this minute, I shall have... Oh, that's nice. Just a, a wee... A wee nip, as they call it. Uh, don't call me that. Mmm. Oh, it's very peaty. Very, very nice. All right, then my wife gave me... Back to the Future... Dimensions, Lego Dimensions set. Now, I don't actually own Lego Dimensions, but she knows I'm a massive, 
massive Back to the Future fan. And this has the uh, hoverboard, Marty with a guitar, and like a, a mini Lego DeLorean. So even if I never actually own Lego Dimensions, I really appreciate the thought of getting me Back to the Future Lego, and that's really cool. And lastly, and the main reason we're doing this, because it is actually an unboxing video, despite the fact that I'm showing off all this other stuff, is from Play Asia. Now I've got to say, this actually got here really fast. I was impressed, very impressed. Um, and the prices were reasonable. I've never ordered anything from Play Asia before. I'm not being paid to do this. For all I know, this doesn't work. I have no idea. I haven't tested it yet. Um, came with uh, some sort of voucher, five dollars off Biohazard. I think I have all the original ones of those. Uh, some uh, Play Asia stickers because you want to advertise, I guess. Uh, Beach body ready. Hashtag D-O-A-X-3. I guess that means, um, an, ooh, giant pair of breasts. I guess that is, um, Dead or Alive, uh, Extreme Volleyball 3. It was almost banned or something like that. Very, I don't know, it was probably a financial decision or something like that. But, you know, I'm sure there were people who were upset about, uh, Beach Volleyball being available in other countries. Um, I, I vaguely remember reading something about that. So now, we have... The main reason I'm doing this video, other than showing off, for my birthday my wife got me the Premium Retro Freak set. Yes, that's right, the Premium version because it comes with the uh, controller adapter so I can use all my retro controllers with this. So, without further ado, let us uh, bring the camera in close and I'll actually unbox this thing. Okay, here is the Retro Freak console box. Uh, I have no idea who that's meant to be on the front there. Possibly their mascot. Now, this is actually being sold in Japan in, in department stores and everything like that. So it's not like some out of the back basement sort of uh, thing that you sell in, you know, secrets or something like that. You know, there are big places that sell this thing and there is obviously a demand for it. So, um... Everything is in Japanese, which uh, I have no problem with, of course, because I can mostly, for the most part, read a lot of this. Uh, it actually does tell you what comes in it here, uh, but we'll open it up and take a look ourselves. Uh, and it tells you here what games, and if you didn't know what the Retro Freak console is, um, I should probably explain. It is basically an emulator where you plug in consoles and it will emulate... Uh, basically dump the ROM from the cartridge onto the system. Unlike the Retron 5, this will actually store those dumped ROMs, which is a, a really cool thing. So it plays uh, Family Computer, Famicom, uh, Super Famicom, uh, Super Nintendo Entertainment System, NTSC and PAL, very important for us here in Australia, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, NTSC and PAL, uh, Mega Drive, uh, Genesis uh, translates to North America Mega Drive. Yep, Genesis, PC Engine, Turbo Graphics 16, and PC Engine Super Graphics, which is cool. Now, I do not own uh, any Turbo Graphics 16 games, but I do own some uh, PC Engine games, so this will be this will be really good actually. I can't wait to play these on a, on something a little bit better than the current setup I have. So let's uh, open it up, see what we got. Okay. Um, uh, GG uh, Mark Three. Oh, okay, and that's cool. Oh man, I've got something else. So um, we've got an advertisement here first of all. So GG slash Mark III. Now GG is uh, Game Gear and Mark III is actually the equivalent for the Master System. So I actually have a couple of Mark III games lying around somewhere. So it'd be good if we could actually do it, but I think this is for something that might be coming out in the future. Cartridge adapter, yeah. So I don't think we have this yet. We'll probably have to buy this at a later date. I'm probably going back to Japan at the end of this year. Uh, so hopefully we can get it by then. Okie dokie. Okay, uh, everything seems to be well protected. Uh, Japanese being Japanese, they put everything in stupid tiny little boxes. 
Mm. Uh, now the adapter does not come with the PAL plugs, unfortunately, for Australia. Uh, hmm. However, it does say that it is adaptable for 200, uh, 100 to 240 volts, which is good, which means I do actually have some connectors around because I'm me and I have that kind of stuff. Uh, this is quite a small package here, and it is the adapter. Look at that. So obviously we have uh, the NES adapter, uh, Master System, Genesis, Mega Drive adapter there, and a PC Engine adapter here. And on the other side we have uh, Super Famicom, Super Nintendo adapter, and Geez, I'm not even sure what this one's for, actually. Maybe it's just the input. Actually, no, I'm sure it's for something. It'll it'll come to me. Um, I'm not sure what it is off the top of my head. I don't have anything that fits that description there. Basically, it looks like a really long Mega Drive uh, one. All right, um, have a whole bunch of cables here. So, uh, just a, a mini USB. I'm guessing that is for the adapter right there. And, uh, just HDMI cable. It, it, this thing runs off HDMI, there is no AV. And, ho, 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 this is the Retro Freak controller. Now, already I can tell that it is of a much better design than the much maligned uh, Retron 5 controller. Now, this actually looks quite familiar. I mean, it, it does have all the hallmarks of a uh, Super Famicom controller, especially pos the positioning of the buttons, you know, uh, A, B, X, Y, L, and R, but its layout is somewhat similar to the Super Game Boy controller. So we've also got an option and home button right there. Super Game Boy controller was released by Hori, uh, and it's uh, actually what I'll do is I will pause and show you. Okay, so this is the Super Famicom uh, Super Game Boy controller released by Hori, and I love this. I think, in my opinion, This is actually better than the original Famicom controller because the buttons have a lot more bounce to them. The, um, the Super Famicom and Super Nintendo controls are a little bit mushy, so you're not even sure if you're pressing the buttons or not. But uh, as a side-by-side -side comparison, there you go. You, you, can, you can see why I might think they're similar. Obviously, the, the rearranged buttons across here, this is obviously meant to look like a, uh, a Game Boy, but they are of a, a similar size and everything like that. Um, almost like a hybrid between them. That's probably not intentional. Um, put that in its box a little bit later on. Now let's look at the console itself. Now it's obviously not that big. Ah. Yeah. And now I would like to introduce to you, hmm, the Retro Freak console. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Okay, so, um, there's not a whole lot to say about when you first look at it. It looks like a plain white box. Aesthetically speaking, I have no problem with it. Um, I'm the kind of person who, despite protests from friends, would probably put stickers on the front because I think it... I like personalizing all of my stuff, basically. Uh, obviously, we've got the... Um, they're not even labeled, which is interesting. We've got the... Um, Game Boy... Uh, Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance at the front here. PC Engine, uh, Turbo Graphics 16 and uh, Super Turbo Graphics, or whatever it is, whatever the other one was. What was the other one? Um, PC Engine Super Graphics. I don't think I have any of those. 
to be honest. Uh, first one is obviously uh, Famicom. Second one looks to be uh, Super Nintendo. And uh, Super Famicom, parallel NTSC. And the last one looks to be like the Mega Drive slash Genesis, PAL and NTSC Japan, all that kind of stuff. So it is a lot smaller than the Retron, and I like that already. The, it's not aesthetically attractive, but it's not ugly either. I think the best way to describe this thing is functional. Uh, and functional is, is what you want here. Now there's a, there is a little bit on the back here. So there's the power button there. There is obviously the uh, output for the HDMI and what to my eyes looks like a, uh, uh, a mini or micro SD card port there. So I think I have one of those lying around, which is good. A couple of gig certainly wouldn't go astray there. Uh, and we've got some USB at the front and all of these of course would be for your controllers you can buy controllers now which uh, mimic the kind of controllers that you would normally use i suppose uh, now the one thing that is notably missing from this is an nes slot so this is obviously made for the american market and the american nes and the famicom are of two different sizes I have a lot of Famicom games, so this doesn't bother me so much. However, that being said, I do own an NES to Famicom adapter. So if I plug this in here, will it still be able to dump the ROM? Good question. We'll find out. So this is the unboxing portion. I might actually plug this in and, uh, and maybe choose one game each to see if it'll... Um, if it'll read the ROMs or not. Uh, hopefully I can do that quickly because this might take a little while to set up. So thank you very much for watching this first part and uh, hopefully there'll be a second part in a minute. But uh, yeah, wish me a happy birthday.